I started to get like a really bad back, but it was like, it wasn't like a normal bad back. The symptoms started to get like worse and worse. I found like a little tiny lump. And then I went to the, the hospital and they said it was just a cyst. And it was just playing on my mind. I was like, nah, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. I ended up ringing 111 and just lying. I just lied to them. Like 80% sure you've got testicle cancer. Did you think you were gonna die? That was like the point where I was like, if it spread, like if it spread to my belly, like it could be bad. Do you ever worry about the coming back? I just knew I wanted to be a UFC fighter. I mean, I, I always wanted to like work hard and just be like, just the, the hardest work and just the fittest person and just, just try and like just break everyone I fight. And I was like, kneeing his head off, he was like cut. But he was like, give us a tough fight. And I remember being like, this, oh, this is really. I felt like I was better than them everywhere. And like, I just went into the fight just thinking like, wherever this guy's, I'm just gonna beat him anywhere. Like, when you underestimate someone, that's that's what happens. So if you'd have won that, you would have got the contract. So today we are joined by Justin Burlinson, pro MMA fighter. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Good, mate. Obviously, it's been it's been a long time. I've been trying to get you on. Here. I've been sending you DMs yeah, left, right, yeah, and centre. No. I thought you were avoiding it. I thought you were avoiding Aye. it. Um, but I know you, you're a man of very few words. You just let the let the fighting do the talking, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Is this is this the first f first podcast you've been on? Uh, no, the second. Second, second now. Do you like do you like Good experience doing them. Um, I, I mean, I, I was putting it off a little bit, but I just thought it's good promotion for the fight and stuff like that. And like, I, I did watch them myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm always watching podcasts or listening to them, so I just thought, why not? Just did. So obviously, there's going to be a lot of people in Sunderland, the North East, who know you are. People who've came to see you fight. Obviously, yeah. a record of eight and two. When did you get into fighting? Because again, I'm a lad from Sunderland, and I have plenty of lads who've, who've sort of got into fighting and stuff. But I don't know many people who's took it as serious as you, as you what you have. Yeah. What was the reason that you first stepped foot in the gym? Um, well, a guy Stephen Scott. Um, he first took us to the gym. He was like friends with my dad, and then he like he took us there. And after, but to be honest, like after like two weeks of training, I just knew I wanted to be a UFC fighter. It's mad that like just like two weeks in, I just thought, oh, no, I really want to do this. Because a bit, a bit of a bit of thing that you'll not know here is, I actually know Steve really well, and um, I was actually with him today, and he said when you went to the gym that first time, he knew, he knew you had something about you. He goes, he was different to other kids. Yeah. Just you, you put him in the gym for ten hours and you just wouldn't stop. Where mm -hmm. do you get that from? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to tell. I, I, de I definitely get it a little bit from me mum, like. Um, because I've grew up like just living with my mum from mm -hmm. a kid and she's always been like big on like discipline and just like making sure like, if I start something I've got to like finish it you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I I always tell people a story I was doing I was swimming like before a little bit a few years before I started MMA I used to like swim um, and, and I was doing my two mile badge and I remember like I got like a mile in and I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was just like, this is, this is shit. <laughs> just looking at the bottom of the pool, just swimming for hours. And I, like, I tried to get up the pool and she was like, nah, you're not. So she was like, just get back in and just finish it. And I was like, I can remember like feeling like tears. Well, obviously I was wet anyway, so you couldn't say the tears, but I feel like tears just coming down my face and I was just like swimming for ages, just hating it. But like I finished it and when I finished it, I was like, nah, I'm glad I, I, glad I finished it. And then I feel like that just instills in you like, a good mindset to be like, no, if you start to me, just go through with it. Even if you're not enjoying it, just like finish it. I think there's definitely something good to be taken there. I think a lot of people could use advice like that, mate, because I know that even when you start a business, mate, like it's so easy to just, you know, sack it off, aye, basically. Aye. And obviously a discipline like fighting is on another level. So mm. when you were sort of doing the swimming, what were you like in school? Um, Just just normal. I, I wasn't really a naughty kid or I wasn't really a like quiet kid. I was just sort of just done sports in school like oh, I was never really good at football but I'd like I'd, I'd do football if there was no else to do you know what I mean I just mm -hmm. always enjoyed doing like sports and stuff like that so what area in Sunderland are you from? Um, well I'm originally from Southwick mm -hmm. that's where I was like born but then I, I grew up in Red House mm -hmm. and what was it like growing up around there because again there's going to be people who are into MMA or the the into your story obviously listening to this and they're going to think this Justin Burnson I've seen him all over the place but what was it actually like growing up where you grew up? What did you see? What what was around you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, Southwick's pretty rough. Um, Red House was a bit more nicer. Like, I think that's like obviously the reason my mum moved us out of Southwick because obviously there's just a lot of like crime and stuff like that, and, like drugs and and just like bad areas where there's just a lot of bad kids. If you you get easy, you just get reeled in with them and start hanging about with them. So 
when we moved to well I can even remember when we moved to Red House but so I just grew up around like better kids up there you know what I mean and just hung about with some like better kids who I wasn't getting in trouble with you know what I mean so did you experience any trouble though like did you were you neat obviously you've you've went down the you know the discipline path path you're doing something well for yourself but did you ever was it close where you could have went down the wrong way um I mean when I was when I, when I was in school I was like from year nine to like the last year, I was like selling cigarettes in school. I didn't smoke myself, but I just sell cigarettes and just like selling stuff like that. So like, it, it probably could, would have been easy just to fall into that mm-hmm. sort of lifestyle and just like move on from selling cigarettes to like selling drugs and stuff like that and so on. You know, Because I mean? so many people do get lost and, and it couldn't be something as simple as selling cigarettes in school. Yeah. And the thing is, mate, like I know that to you, like, because I know the crack, like, but when, when you're saying like, selling cigarettes in school and it's, it's, it's funny when you look back on uh, it but there'll be so many people who listen or watch, to, watch this and think even that's mad uh, like selling fags in school uh, like you didn't even smoke yourself no, no. so in a way like it's like hustler's mindset as a kid do you know mm. what I mean like when you think uh, about it like and I know like I know lads who, who've been down that path where the parents have mad them sell cigarettes in school yeah, do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, so that yeah. it just goes to show like what they were actually brought up around where get yourself to school sell fags Max some money for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just kind of shows you your environment. So it's like, it's mad when you say that there, just it sparked that. With the, with the fighting, when did you actually get into that? I know obviously you were saying Stephen took you down to the gym. When did you go and actually, do you know what, like, I want to do this? Um, like, like I said, really just like straight away. Mm-hmm. Like um, after, obviously, I mean, my first session at the gym was pretty rough, like to be fair. I feel like I got like, beat up and like the coach sort of like got the other guys who were like a bit more experienced to like purposely beat us up mm-hmm. to see if I'd like come back or not but um, I remember the first like spawn session I'd done I got like really badly beat up dropped everything like dropped with leg kicks dropped with body shots not like head shots like the gym wasn't like that where it was like the coach was telling people to like knock you out but it was like put a little bit of pain on you you know what I mean see if you come back and I just kept coming back what 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 was it like, right? Because again, there's going to be people who watch that listen to this, right? Now I'm one of them. I don't, I don't know, fight, right? Is it is it something that you thrive off? That like I need to get better because I've had I've had a, a bunch of different fighters and and pro level fighters and stuff on the on the podcast, mate. And the the thing that I found like a common theme, it's like a few people have actually said when I was getting put on my ass, I wanted to learn how f- to make sure that doesn't happen to me again or how to do that to other people. Yeah. What was your experience like when you were seeing you getting put in your ass and dropped and stuff? Like, how did that actually make you feel? Were you angry? Did you... Um, not so much angry. Like, I did... I think it just, like... It just hurt your ego at first. Like, mm-hmm. when everyone goes to the gym and, like, that's why a lot of people quit because it's not the actual pain, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not... It's not as painful as it looks in fights. But it's just, like, it, it does hurt your ego... Because everyone, th- like, especially people from Sunderland, like, everyone thinks they can fight. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, a good thing in a way. It's a bad thing sometimes, but, like, it does make the area, like, a lot tougher because everyone thinks they can fight. So, like, you've got to actually know how to fight. Oh, I thought there's a, there's a big difference in the, between someone who can fight and uh, being trained to fight uh, and just a lad on the street. Exactly, so... Did you did you have any fights before you got into a gym? Like, were you a type of lad who'd get into fights on the street or in school or out or not? Um, I had loads of, when I was in school, like, Growing up in that, um, like after school, before school, mm-hmm. just like have like fights with like all the kids or, and I I, I don't know I'd, like I, I I never really like got into that many but like I I did enjoy it when I did uh-huh. like when I had a fight and like after even if I lost like there's a lot of times when I just got beat up in school but like but if if it was like an older kid and I got beat up I was just like well, at least at least I at least I tried you know what I mean when you say like. <laughs> you still well up. Like, did you get like a rush from it or something? Like, what was the? Do you know what I mean? Because I know uh, most people would go. I don't want to get into a fight to start with. Never mind getting excited about it. Do you know what I mean? Ah, uh, like, well, it is. It's it's still like scary. Like every fight's like scary. Like even even if like you have a fight outside the gym, it's like it's even more scary really because you could just get stabbed. Well, mm-hmm. at least in the gym, it's like there's someone there to stop it if you get hurt. Ah, uh, true. You know what I mean, but I did like. I, I, it is the best feeling in the world. Like just having a fight and then like the feeling after especially when you win as well it's like it's just the feelings like no like it it's crazy you say that because that you, when you say like it's the best feeling in the world because there's two ways I look at that one way is 
it's almost inhumane to say it's the best film in the world to have a fight. Yeah. But then the, on the flip side, it's all it's also primal. Like yeah, that's what yeah. we do. Do you know what I mean? Like you hunt, you fight. That do you know it's part and parcel of like being a human being, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I suppose just now we didn't need to fight. So when there's people like you kicking around, putting yourself in that scenario, it's like where did you get the mind? That's why I'm really, I'm really drawn to the mindset of someone like yourself. Like why do you put yourself in that position when you don't need to? Like even when you set foot in the gym, you don't necessarily. There's not even a money goal because they mm-hmm. only the top mark good money doing yeah, it. Yeah, so like, it's like. What was your driving factor to keep going back to the gym? Was it just to get better? Yeah, just like, I, like one, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the training. I enjoyed like the, the fighting side of it. But it, it's like, it's never ending. You know what I mean? Like it's like even the best fighter in the world at the minute is like he can still get better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's no, there's no, there's no like barrier where you get to that level. And obviously, see, you might win a title and you get all your money and then you might just want to just leave the sport in like good health which like it's probably the smart thing to do like get your money and just get out what's happening guys i hope you're enjoying the episode so far if you are please hit that like hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode i so i I just mean like the mindset of why like you'd keep going if you know that money's not the incentive is it a case of just wanting to get better like is that why you kept going back yeah definitely because it's just it's like you can sort of like sometimes you'll just like plateau for like a while where like you you don't really feel anything like mm-hmm. oh like your trainer might because he's like watching you every day and he, he can see your skills like develop a little bit more but like a lot of times it just feels like you're just stuck in the mode and you just plateau and then all of a sudden it's just like one week you just boom you jump up a few levels and then that, that's what, and it's like that feeling of like oh that's what I'm doing mm-hmm. I'm better, you know what I mean like did just, did you watch MMA before I um. I remember the first time I was up the caravan with my dad and mm-hmm. it was like four o'clock in the morning and I was it was like a tiny little telly in the, in the caravan and I was just like flicking through the channels and then I flicked on it was like I think it was Rampy Jackson mm-hmm. fighting Keith Jardine mm-hmm. um, and that was like the first UFC fight I'd seen like I, di- I, I didn't even know what UFC meant you know what I mean I, I just oh, flicked on the telly and I remember watching that but I was really young then like this before like I'd started anything and that was the first time I'd seen it, and I just thought, like, wow, that's mental. Like, how how is actually people doing that? Crazy, that. Like, like, you know did you mean? ever picture that you'd be in that position? Not at that point, but as soon as I started training, I did. Did you know you had a talent? Like, were you told a lot anyway, or did you? Could you feel yourself leveling up? Um, no, I I wouldn't say I was like naturally like gifted or talented. Um, but people sort of just mentioned like how hard I worked, you know what I mean? Like I'd always just like give hundred percent, and like that's what the sort of coaches like, you know what I mean? And then I think the more you give into the train, the more the train will give you. Oh, yeah, that's like good the point, more man. they want to teach you, because like if you turn up a train, you're just half arse and everything. It's like like why 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 would the coach put time in here? If you just half arsing it, because yeah. it's it, the reason I ask you that, Justin, is because obviously, I, I, before I get on a podcast, I'll, I'll try and do a bit of research and, like, not sit on a computer doing research, but yeah. like I'll ask around people who know the person. Yeah. Like, do you know him? What's he like? What's he like in the gym? How's he? What's his mindset like? Like, is he a talker? Is he not? Mm. And every single person I've spoken to has always said about your work ethic. That's what I mean. So, he, yeah. and that's why I said at the start of the episode, they were like, he's just, he'll outwork anyone. Yeah. Do you, is that something you pride yourself on? Like, you think, if I'm not the be- the most talented in the room, I need to be the one who's working hardest. Do you always have that in your head? Yeah, yeah and a little bit, because it's just like, even times when, like, people can be better than you in the gym, but, like, as soon as, like, if you're just always just outworking that person, like, normally, like, talented people in the gym, like the really like the skills, the better than everyone at everything. But as soon as it gets hard, like the sort of wilt. You know what I mean, mm. I noticed that like from a young age, like seeing good fighters like wilt, and and I just thought, nah, I never wanna, I never wanna like look like that, like look like I'm like just tired in one round. You know what I mean? Just a like, one round and being tired and then like just get beat because I gassed. You know what I mean? I, I always wanted to, like work hard and just be like just the, the hardest work and just the fittest person and just. Just trying, like, just break everyone I fight. So I know you've obviously you fought on the contender series, the UFC. Yeah. You fought in front of Dana White and the like. Like, before we get onto that, because again, I, the reason I want to mention that is because I need people to understand the caliber of of Lado I've got sitting in front of us, and yeah. I think that a lot of people who don't know this, yeah, you know, that's the you didn't really get much higher in terms of where you're fighting. Yeah, yeah. Can you remember if you strip it back? Can you remember your first fight? 
Me, um, I, I think he might have been there, you know. Was I? I think, but I was I was like first fight on the card, so you might might have missed it because I didn't. Like, was that me of the cage? I me of the cage. Was that where it was? I, um, I'd like a. I actually had a like tough opponent for me for me. I mean, me pro debut was a kind of tough opponent, and me amateur debut was a tough opponent. I was like fifteen, the the lad was like sixteen. Adam Proctor. No, 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 no. no, no. That, was, that was before. Ah, uh, that was my first was... amateur loss. Right, right, right. Um, I see. I can't remember. Aye. It was called Cameron Aiden. Right, okay. I think it was mm-hmm. from from South Shields, mm-hmm. and he was like a bit of a prospect at the time. He was like one and all, but he was like everyone was talking about like, oh, he's he's a good kid. He's gonna be good. Um, and then I got matched up with him for my first fight, and it was like a three round, three round war. Um, like I cut him and everything. Like the rules have changed now because when you when you're sixteen, when you're under sixteen, you can't even do headshots anymore. Right. It's just it's just grappling, kicks, and body shots. But the rules were different then. Like I feel I feel kind of old saying that because like <laughs> the rules like, have changed. I, aye, aye, aye. But um, like. I cut them with like knees to the head. I was like flying knee them and everything. And like now they just didn't let they didn't even let the amateurs knee in the head anymore. No. And that was like my that. first fight and I was like kneeing his head off. He was like cut. Um but he was like, it gives us a tough fight. And I remember being like in the fight thinking, fuck, like this oh, this is real. This this is like different to the gym. This is this is like a lot harder. Because obviously in the gym it's like there's no stress. Mm-hmm. The music's on, you know what I mean? You just with your mates, you're just training, having fun. Like even though you're working hard. And it's hard training, and you're tired, but it's like there's no anxiety because there's no crowd yeah. there. You know what I mean? That when once people walk out, like you'll see people in the gym, they're like world beaters, and then they go out there and the crowd hits them, and they're like they're just not the same fighter. They're like sixty oh, percent yeah. of what they were in the gym. It's mad. Do you think it's all the, just the pressure and that, isn't it, as well? Ah, uh, I just stage, pressure, anxiety, like the ego. You you, just, you don't want to you don't want to lose. You don't want to get embarrassed mm-hmm. in front of your family. Like you've sold all these tickets and all your family's came, your mum's there. What was it like, like that first fight though? Was did you have the nerve selling the tickets and getting your family to come and watch? Because you'd never done that like that before, really. So, like, a lo- even a local show, you're still gonna have that pressure. Did you mm. feel, you know, when you said earlier about like you still get scared enough for fights, and or when you were younger, did did you feel that then and all? No, I did, my first fight, I was probably like the least nervous I've ever been. Like, I was just sort of just like, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've chose to do this, so. Like you see some people in the lottery room before, and they're like, you see them so nervous, and like I think they forget like you chose this. Oh, yeah, like, that's a good. You point, chose to be here, yeah. Like and it's the same with like the weight cuts as well. Mm-hmm. Like when you're cutting weight, and you're feeling sorry for yourself, like because it is hard. Like especially like at amateur, you're not cutting that much weight because it's sort of sometimes it's DM weighing. You don't want to be cutting weight and get punched in the head the same day. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times it's like day before weighing, obviously pro. Um, and it's like, it's easy to feel sorry for yourself, but then you just got to remind yourself, like, I, I chose to do this, like, this is just part of the job, I've got to get it done to fight. I love that, you know, and the reason I love you saying that is because, like, again, I know that a lot of people watch for, like, business or different types of people, or I get on the podcast, mate, and, like, even for me, like, this, even when situations get hard, I, I've chose to do it, like, uh, just pick yourself up. Uh, like, I just, just you know what I mean? It, you know what I mean? After that first fight, what was your kind of what did you want to do then? Just keep fight, being as active as much as you can, try and build a record up. Like, what was your plan? Um, did you want to turn pro? Yeah, yeah, I definitely wanted to turn even before I had my first fight. I wanted to literally be a, from back yeah, then yeah, when I, you said I, you want to fight I in the be a professional studio, yeah. Um, and like, at first, I thought it was just like you just have a few amateur fights, but I ended up having like 19 amateur fights. Um, but it, it turned out. Good, because I remember being like ten and one at one mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Amateur and people were like, "Nah, you should turn pro now. Like you've got ten wins. Like, like you beat like a kind of few people in the company now. Like you're one of the best amateurs. Like just turn pro." But and then I end up having like another eight fights on top of that. But it it's like if I would speak to any like younger fighter, I would say like just try and get as many fights as you can, because like that amateur record's gone. I had a mint record at eight, 18 and 1 amateur, but it's gone, you know what I mean? No one cares about it. Yeah, it's so true. So it's like, some amateurs like lose a couple of fights and they're like devastated, like end of the world for them. It's like, no, nah, this just works experience. Like, you just oh, got to, you're just learning on the job. Like, mm-hmm. like, because obviously you kind of, there's certain, there's, there's certain stuff you can learn in the gym, but then once you get in the fight, there's like different stuff you can only learn on doing that job. Like, doing even the pressure, even just, yeah, being yeah, there, just dealing with that. that. And like, I... even little things like, like warming up like the correct way because like before fights you, you get really tired 
mm-hmm. off like the anxiety. It like makes you it makes you get the taller constantly. Like everyone's pissing before the fights, like like mad. What what was it like turning pro? What what was how does it happen? Just for someone who doesn't know, like how, how do you get from the amateur grade to actually turning pro? So like it's not like well, it is like boxing. Like obviously you see people who like you see people in boxing that you think is he actually a boxer or mm-hmm. is he like just a milkman or something. <laughs> Um, so like anyone that just turned pro, mm-hmm. like you could I could get you a fight the weekend, Aye. like a professional fight. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no like rules to it. it. It's just when you get under the bigger shows, obviously you need like visas and proper medical brain scans and stuff like that, and, like uh, like bloods done. But like the lower shows, like you can anyone can just jump on if they want. So you get in your your pro career. Obviously, you've got a record of eight and two. Was your first loss on the contender series? Contender series, aye. Because you that just come out of Niwa, didn't it? Because mm. you were just absolutely dominating everything you were doing, even like I say, your amateur career. Then I remember that. I remember when when that happened, and it was almost like, was it first round or not? First round, aye. Fucking hell. So for people who don't know, obviously pro MMA fighter, how did that whole scenario come about with the UFC, the contender series? So I was. I was training down, um, well, I was living in Liverpool at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived there for like two years, training down there with um, a coach called John Gillies. Um, and then it was like just after COVID. So obviously I'd like, everyone, everyone sort of like lost like two years of the career during COVID because there wasn't, unless you were in the UFC, like no right. one was putting on shows because you just couldn't. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was enough. only the UFC could could day because they had the money yo what's happening people if you are liking the episode so far make sure you click the like button hit the subscribe button and also press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode so i was training down there uh, and then i was meant to have a fight in the middle of covid because it was on bellator and like it was the, the ufc were a bit ahead of them like putting on more shows and bellator tried to like came back and put on a few shows and then i got a fight in italy which was like probably the worst at the, at the time, I remember when the Italy was like one of the worst COVID Best spots. Time. So I was like, I got booked for fighting there. And then we flew out, like trained. I'm in camp for it. Perfect camp. Everything went well. Felt in shape. I was fighting a, another guy from Liverpool, actually. Right. Which which was weird because I was living down there and I got matched with a guy in there in Italy. Um, he was 5-0. I think I was I was 5-0 as well. Um, so it was like perfect fight. Two undefeated fighters. Um, and then we got out there, and my coach John Gillies tested positive for COVID, and cause you're in the bubble, everyone was like, if you went out there with your team, like you just start to stay together, stay in the same hotel rooms, and not like leave anywhere. And if any one of you tested positive, the fight was off. Right. I see. So when he tested positive, I remember I was like, I was cutting weight, so it was like the the Thursday night, I think it was, and I was weighing in the next morning. Um, so I was cutting weight and I was down to like 79 kilos so I had like 2 kilos to gun so mm-hmm. I was like I was flying it um, and then they just came and knocked on my room they were like oh is your flight on the morning and I was like what do, you, what do you mean they were like oh John's tested positive for COVID like so all he is the fight off he's, he's not gone home that was it just <laughs> flew back the next year then um, so I was like devastated about that because I was like oh, big fight and like I was getting paid better money on Bellator as well so mm-hmm. And obviously you put all the training for it. Aye, everything and like moved my life down to Liverpool and stuff like that. And I just like, I just went to shit straight away. And I was like, oh, fuck's sake, what am I going to do next? And then I got a fight for Kid Royce. Mm-hmm. So my contract, I sort of got out my contract because it got terminated and stuff like that. And then I signed with Kid Royce. Had one fight on there. Beat the, I actually beat the guy who was nine and one. A French guy, and if he beat me, he was getting a UFC contract for Paris because they, they had a Paris oh, show coming up. Man, and then I ended up beating him. He's never fought since. See, it's crazy. Just, got, just got <laughs> it's to show, doesn't it? The power of it. Like, ah, it's crazy. He's never one wrong since. fight. Nigga. Aye. Um, and I felt like I just like I felt like I really did like just break him in the fight. Like I just like took his will. Like just mm-hmm. sort of. I feel, I feel like that's why he's never fought again because I feel Aye. like I just broke him that bad. Um, so that was a that was a good win against a good opponent. And then I got the call up for the content of the series straight after. And who was it? Who was on the phone? Like, did did you speak to Dana? No, nah, just all emails that? and stuff. Just all like emails. That. No, and that. Dana White's not ringing you up for the content of the series. Aye. He's not. Aye, That's aye, like. Aye. Did did you do you get to meet him throughout the whole thing? Or not? No, I didn't. I didn't meet him. Um, he was Keir's side, but I didn't even see him. Mm-hmm. To be fair, but the only the only time I seen him was when 
I was walking out, like obviously I got I got knocked out, lost the fight, devastated walking out of the the, the apex. Mm -hmm. That's where the whole the contender series. I was walking out. I was with John, you know Jack Grant. Right, I. I was with Jack Grant. I was with Darren Till. He was right. out there just, and he knew John, so mm -hmm. he was sort of just like showing us about, just giving us lifts everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then we're walking out, and he, he, John was like, "Ah, it's dry sunside." And I remember just looked at the telly, and it was Dana White giving my opponent. The, the UFC contract and I was like so if you'd have won that you would have got the contract aye I've, like definitely aye like because there's some people who didn't get it but because they're boring but like I've never been in the boring fight like 100% finish rate like the last time I went to decision I was like 17 when I was amateur what you know 27 27 so like it's mad that so you like, you would definitely be the perfect fit for the UFC yeah like, yeah like how, yeah. how did that feel knowing that obviously did you feel like quitting I mean, you're not a quitter, but like, did you feel like maybe it's just not for me? Didn't get me where, and or nah. did you always know you were gonna come back? Nah, I um, I remember I actually rang me, me girlfriend rang her straight after. Now she she was just like hysterical crying, mm -hmm. um, and I was just saying, oh, like I'm alright, like look, look at me face, like I need marks on my face. I was like, I just got caught, and I'm I'm alright now. I'm like, just that's what happens. It's fighting in it, mm -hmm. um, and I actually said on the phone, I was like, I was like, give us one year. And I'll come back to the cage and I'll be fighting for the world title next year. And I, I did. That's mad, that. So, That's mad, that. So did you... Is that still in your scope? Do you still want to get back to the UFC? Is that why you're fighting now? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Is that the goal still, to still be back there? Yeah, so it's like... Like, I've, I've been offered... I remember when I left Bellator, I actually got offered... The, the offer is like even more money, like triple the money I was on to stay. But it was just like... I didn't want to just go into Bellator because it's sort of like the B League of MMA. Mm -hmm. And the way it works, like the UFC didn't really sign people from Bellator because it's like competition. Yeah, I get And then it saying. shows that they're producing fighters on a UFC level. So they're just like, the UFC just doesn't sign anyone. So unless, you're like, unless you're the champ and you like see a Michael Chandler and you're, you've got a big following, then they'll sign you. But like, if you're just, just fighting on the show, even if you're undefeated, it's like, they didn't want to sign you because it just looks, it makes Bellator look better. So Cage Warriors is the platform for yeah, like if, to... if you, especially if you're English fighter or like a European fighter, like Cage Warriors is the best route to. Because yeah, UFC. I know that. I think I think it's you know the second loss that you had. Yeah, I'm sure that kid went on to the UFC. I Reese. Um, so he he was he was originally in the the UFC, and then he got he took a short notice fight. He was still on Cage Warriors. Uh, he took a short notice fight, and it was Kamzat. Right. Um, yeah. And Tam comes at like, he sort of like mauled him a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, um, I felt like I was on my way to doing the same thing to him when I when I fought Reese as well. But obviously, I, I got caught in the in the end. Because um, I think his record was like thirteen eight or something, isn't it? Ah, uh, good record in it. Like that'd be a good rematch after years too. I definitely, I definitely want the rematch. Uh, like in the UFC, that's what like that's one of the reasons. But not the reason I'm want to get the UFC but like I would like that to be like one of my first fights to get that loss back uh, yeah. and maybe fight the other guy as well who like the Reese, uh, like I respect Reese. He's, he's good fighting like his record doesn't show how good he is because mm -hmm. like he, he like he's been fighting for world titles since he was like 21 so he's fought good people from like a very young age so he's like an experienced veteran but he's still he was still pretty young when I fought him Um. But the other guy on the contender series, like I feel like I just underestimated him. Mm -hmm. Like was that like Johan or something? Yeah, he uh, was like he was five and zero, mm -hmm. but he was just like the only thing he had was power. Like he, he was just like gifted with power. Like it was definitely like, the hardest of being a hit ever. Like really? even even when I walked out and like the first click kick he flung, like hit me arm and he just felt like so dense. Like mm. like he just had like natural like God given power. But his technique was terrible. Mm -hmm. And like, I felt like I was better than them everywhere. And like, I just went into the fight just thinking, like, wherever this guy's, I'm just going to beat him anywhere. Like, but then I felt like when you underestimate someone, that's, that's what happens. Is it what? a different level of pressure, Justin? You know, when, you, when you're fighting on that type of stage compared to like a made for the cage? Is it a di or do you still feel the same? You just gone in for a fight. You, you didn't want to embarrass yourself. Mm. You've got a lot of ego on the line. You know you've trained hard. You've maybe cut weight. You've you've sacrificed a lot. Your misses probably you probably you probably hard to live with. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like there's probably a load of that stuff that people didn't even see that you yeah. have to go through, or, or your family around you have to go through. Do you th does the pressure get worse when you get to a bigger stage? I know that might sound like a daft question, but no, no, definitely. Like as, as you 
as you get on in your career, like the pressure does like build up a little bit more because obviously each each win takes you to an, another level mm-hmm. where like there's bigger stuff coming after that. So it's like I always get into the fight. Like you're always thinking about the long term goal of getting to the UFC. So it's never like it's always just the same nerves because you're always thinking about the long term goal. So it's just like just win this and then get on the next one and win that, get on the next one. So it's it's, it's all like the same pressure really. Is it is it like getting to the UFC? I know that you said that that was kind of your dream when you were a kid, and it's unbelievable. Even even where you've you've already achieved, it's, it's unbelievable, man. So like, yeah. congrats to you for that. Like, cause it's, it just goes to show, mate. You're a lad from Sunderland. Things yeah. can be done. You put the yeah. hard work in. You've said yourself you weren't the most talented fighter kicking about, yeah. but you've, you've you've outworked most people in getting to that point. Obviously, yeah. you still are a talent, mate. I mean, I've yeah. I've watched a majority of your fights, and you're an absolute beast. Like, yeah. so it's like when you see that, you're like, oh well, there's no, there's no, there's no, um, you know, of course you you're gonna gone on to do well because when you look at you in that you think when you're in that cage and watch how you gone on you think yeah you can you can see where there's levels to the game yeah. and you even just a fan of the sport mate when I look at it and appreciate certain fighters like I maybe that'll be the end of his run you can kind of tell yeah, with yeah. you it's like you're always snapping at the ankles as well yeah. so even when you took that loss unfortunately it hasn't it hasn't sort of diverted you from your plan which is which no. is unbe- you know what I mean which I no. think is unbelievable again credit to you for that with Again, for people who don't know this, right? Because there's no real promise of getting how even how far you get in the UFC. Is it is it a pride thing to get the UFC, or is it a money thing? Um, well, a little bit both now, like especially especially just having a baby, like a, a little bit different. Because then, obviously, I'm not making that much money now, where I can like provide for my family, so. It's definitely that added goal on on top of that goal already mm-hmm. of like being able to provide for your family now. But obviously, I started just because I loved it, and that's that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be on the best show. Like, say if you're playing football, like you want to be in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just it's the same. You don't want to you don't just aspire to just be in the Champions League. You always yeah, want to be yeah, in like the Premier League and just and like playing the World Cup and stuff like that, and like being the biggest events possible. You know what I mean? So who would you compare yourself to? If you could, if you could pick a fight where you're going, I'm probably most like him, or even someone who influences you. You, you didn't even have to be like them, just somewhere you're like, ah, oh, he's the boy. Um, I'm trying to think. It's been loads over the years, you know what I mean? Like, is, there, is there anyone at the minute that you're looking at thinking? Oh, he's Alex Pereira at the minute. Mm-hmm. I love Alex Pereira. Like, I think everyone does at ah, the minute. He's just he's on fire, isn't he? Um, but obviously, back in, the, like, back in the day when McGregor was coming up, that was like, that sort of just like added to like the. F- the, the fire of like why I want to do it as well like seeing McGregor mm-hmm. like someone from Ireland like and there was no Irish fighters who had ever won the UFC yeah, apart from yeah, then yeah. so it was like it was good seeing him come up and obviously everyone loved like people didn't even know the UFC but they know Conor McGregor it's crazy that isn't it do you think do you think you need to do a bit shit talking uh, it definitely it definitely helps like like I feel like if you're not the most exciting fighter you've got to do it like look at Colby Covington oh, like yeah. He's like a beast of a fighter. I love watching him as well. Like fighters like him, like Colby Covington, like amazing wrestler, good striking and stuff like that. But like he just he wasn't really finishing people. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't finish people, like like that's you know when you were saying at the beginning, like that's maybe I don't have to see as much because like I just let the the finishers do the talking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the more Alex Pereira didn't talk that much, but he's just knocking people out. Because I watched finished. the interview with you. Um, it was a while ago now, it was when I first asked you to come on. And it was, you were in Vegas. I can't remember who was interviewing you, but you were on about wearing socks in bed. It wasn't and all the that. fucking small, was it? Aye, it was. The, the guy with the glasses. Aye, it was. Aye, and I watched that interview. And you weren't talking much. You kind of said the odd word. And I thought, maybe he's when I get him on the podcast, he's not going to speak. Is that why he's avoiding coming on? Because he doesn't like having them conversations. But then, obviously, sitting here now, you can talk. Aye, you know what I mean? Aye. So it's like. No, but, that, that was just a weird one because it was like. I didn't even know I was going to do the interview. I knew who the small was. And then I just like finished the session at the gym and uh, Darren Till was like, oh, the smalls came. He, I've asked him to do the interview with you. So he got us the interview. Aye. But I didn't even want it. Like, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, do the interview, it'll be good. And then like, he's just talking as normal as Aye. before. He's like the most normal person ever. And like, I just got knee like, I didn't know how the interview was going to go. And then he just waxed the glasses on. He's like, this is the small with the pro. And then he just like, he's he's got like a, all ego for the interviews. Aye. Like a bit of a stupid, I don't know. 
I like, like the way he goes on. It's just stupid. It. It. It's weird. Uh, and then like, I just didn't expect it, and I was just like, "What is this?" Do you, do you wear socks for bed? I I, I haven't got socks on now, but I wear is socks that, every night. I have since being a kid. Oh, is that? Oh, I thought you were just. Having no, no, I've been mean, serious. Actually, I, I actually, any reason? I, I just I just hate not wearing socks for bed. Like I wear them knee socks during the day. I didn't mind, but for bed, I don't know. Just weird. See, I, could, I couldn't wear socks in bed. I'd feel like it was cutting me freedom off. I see. I, I hate, I'll like. I'll try sometimes and then I'll wake up like two o'clock in the morning and put some socks on. <laughs> like I don't know, I don't know. Oh, that's mental up. Maybe it's a bit autism or something, I don't know. <laughs> Do you think what would you what would you be doing if you weren't if you weren't fighting now? Um Is that what else that you think you're good at, that you could you'd have a gun at, or that you would have done? I before I did start MMA, I I was because me my mum was like, I'm not letting you not do your sport. Mm-hmm. Like you're not just hanging about the street every night, like you can get out some nights but like most of the week you've got to be like doing some sort of sports or mm-hmm. doing something um, so I tried getting into gymnastics but it was like a fortune my mum couldn't afford it so and then I changed and then I wanted to do rugby mm-hmm. which is now it's a bit different gymnastics to rugby um, and then we couldn't find anywhere of that and then obviously Scotty took us to there and then I was like oh mum I just want to I'll do this it's crazy isn't it? I literally just like as soon as I started I just never went out with my mates again like from school like, I was going to ask you that, like, in, in your, like, gone down your path, Justin, right, like, do you, have you found that people have kind of either dropped off along the way, stopped speaking to you, or they've seen a bit of jealousy as mm-hmm. you've kind of been on your path? Because again, right, I'm a lad, I know what it's like, you're from Sunderland, and I've experienced certain things along the way. With fighting, it's like a different ball game because there's a bit of ego there. I don't even mean from the fighter, just in terms of other lads. Like every lad wants to be able to fight uh, in some way. Do you uh, know what I mean? Like deep down, I've never fought, yeah. like properly fought. I've yeah. never, I've never done that. But I've got a daughter. Yeah. And in my head, regardless, I think I'll be able to do anything to protect her. Oh, and I, I. But realistically, what's what's absolutely horrible if me and you get into a tangle, I mm. can't win that fight. So yeah. like, and that's the like that's not me. So I'd have to go and do something else. Like, I can't win a fight Aye. against someone like... So, and that's what's really frightening. And mm. the majority of people can't fight. Yeah. That's, so did did you ever, along the way, experience any kind of like... Do you, do you feel a bit like, I will... I know that if I go into a normal environment, there's most people that I'm, I'm doing here. I know that sounds horrible to no, say. No, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. No, no I definitely... Uh, I feel like it just... Like, you just have like a bit more confidence about yourself. Because mm-hmm. then you know that's not like a a major factor of like a bad thing happening. Like obviously mm-hmm. there's loads of bad situations that could happen in life, but then that just takes warm. Like obviously I could still get killed in a fight, but like yeah, or killed with a weapon or something like that. But it's like it just gives you a little bit of confidence to know that if it does go bad, like you'll be safe. You know what I mean? Like at least you can just defend yourself to get away from the situation and stuff like that. And I feel like when people people can feel that when you walk in the room, mm-hmm. and and then. Like most of the time, when people pick and fight for people, they the more of like a bully, mm-hmm. and like bullies never want to pick a fight with someone who is probably gonna fight back. Mm-hmm. Like they always want to pick a fight with someone who's not gonna fight back. You know what I mean? Oh, so just enough. like you get into less trouble, really. Mm-hmm. Like, did you did you get what what were your kind of friendships not like when you were going through all this? Did you realize that all your friends were fighters, or did you have friends who didn't fight? And you've had to kind of drop them a bit, or do you still stay in touch with everyone who you used to? Uh, like I've got like what one friend from school who I still talk to now. Um, not, that, but like me and him like sort of drifted apart like at the end of school because I started M M M E and you like the end of school, um, and he he got a girl pregnant. Right, that's so it was like our complete. lives just to talk, like we're best mates all the way through school, and then like. Obviously, I had other friends in school, but he was, like, one of my best mates, for, like, from, like, nursery. Mm-hmm. Um, but then our lives just sort of, like, changed, you know what I mean? Like, oh, he was right. having a baby at 15, and I was, I was starting MMA, like, and then once I went to the gym, I just started, like, sort of, I didn't, like, sort of drop him, like, like drop, like, my mates, like that, but just sort of, I was training all the time. I was training every night. Mm-hmm. So, like, after I finished training I didn't really have time to like go and go home and get changed and go out with my mates. My mum probably wouldn't have let us anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just started hanging about with the guys from the gym and like there was a couple of guys like Mick, 
mm-hmm. Kaelin, mm-hmm. uh, Dave, mm-hmm. like they, they were all like similar age to me and then they sort of just took us underneath their wing and I just started hanging about with them all the time. Because the reason I ask that is I think, I think again, I'll always like akin it to like a business or something because I didn't, there's a lot of people out there that I know who've had the similar sort of scenarios to me, mate, where when you're doing something in life, like I've obviously got a business outside of this podcast and it's like when you're doing it, it's, it's all you do. Yeah. So like, my spare time is filled with doing this. That's yeah. not because I'm a workaholic. That's just because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to build from it. So it's like, it's not like, oh, he's addicted to just graphing all the time. It's more like, no, I want to set myself up in the, for the future and Aye. I cannot spend time just going down the town. Yeah, I, it's very yeah, hard yeah. for me to, to put myself in that. Then if, if I have a few drinks, I'm hung out and I cannot work. And yeah. some people are going, oh, but you, you need to enjoy yourself more. I know, oh, but I didn't enjoy that feeling. I like to be be able to be productive. Yeah, yeah. Like, even if it's gone to the gym for a little, just something where I can and do something productive for myself. And obviously, again, we're fighting. It's like, you're going to have very little time to sort of do them things because you need to focus on doing that. Yeah. Do you miss, do you miss not being able to do that? Like, just going out on the lash all night and that? Um, no, no. Do you not? I've never really... But like being like a drinker, like uh, like for me, like, like obviously I I can't after fights and stuff like that. I can out like Christmas and stuff like that, like for events and stuff. But I've never really just enjoyed just like drinking. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. my, maybe it's like a glass of wine with my girlfriend or something. Like, have a meal off we're in the house, but like never really enjoyed it that much. I even oh, gone out and just partying. I've never really enjoyed it. So it was pretty easy. So have you never been? And I've asked a few people this. I asked Davy Grant this. I've asked a few lads this. Like. Have you ever been tested outside the gym just by someone who thinks they can fight? Or like, or so you reckon you're a cage fighter, do you? Like, I'll have a gun. Do you ever get that or not? Um, no, no. No, not, not with, like, I think it's just the ease. I think maybe it's like a few, like, years ago, you probably would because people didn't know I'm a mate, but I feel like people just, like, see cauliflower ears now and like, oh, he's, he's a fighter, so... Do you reckon people get into it just to get the collie lugs? Ah, some people like. Do you reckon? I've, I've trained with some people where like they start getting a, a little bit of a collie like early on, and they've been training like a month, and they're like constantly like, rubbing it, trying to like, make it bigger. <laughs> I'm like, do they really do that. I like people honestly. Like, I've seen people like bang that on here to like, Shut up, to man. give this like a bigger bigger collie, but they're just like I don't know why because it just kills. <laughs> like, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt now. They're just rock solid. Mm-hmm. But like when they first blow up, so you kind of sleep because it's like. Your head, like if you lie on, you can only sleep on one side, and if you've got both sides, it's, your head's just killing. So it's like it's not That's nice, really. Mad, but once you get them, it's like you never really get them again. Like you oh, just get right. them once they're gone hard, and then they sort of like strengthen a little bit. So I want to talk about. Obviously, I think I think again, everyone's got their own kind of story of adversity, and that's kind of like the overarching theme of day in this podcast, mate. I always find people have been through challenges obviously fighting itself is a is a yeah. challenge it's you know it's a career with everything's against you yeah to, to try and make it as a fighter and obviously again congrats to where you're getting me because it's class to watch me I fucking, again even the fact that you're just a, a lad from from my area it's good yeah. it's always good to see other people fucking doing well I, I, I love that mate like the likes of mick park and then when you see what they're doing it's like fucking good on you man like, uh, no, this is what you want because there's people there's people around us mate and I know that there's enough for if you want to gun round. We can all gun for like it. We can it. all get it. Like, Aye. do you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people think I've been to certain, even certain areas, made up and down the country, where it's like the mentality is a bit different. It's like it's almost like a, they didn't want people to succeed. Ah, it's weird, mate. That's crazy. It's like when, like I've been training with Mick since like a kid. So and like we're both seeing each other win and lose. And when when he loses, it feels that like I've lost. You know what I mean? Yeah, when he exactly. wins, it feels that like I've won. And he feels the same way about me. And it's like when when he got in the, in the UFC, it was like I was like buzzing. I was like, "Fuck no, go on, Mick. He's in the UFC." It's like that's what that's what we've all been working for since we've been young. And like he's the first one. He's done it. He's done it. You know what I mean? It inspires and, you and all, doesn't it? And then obviously won the bonus and all. So it's a, aye, it's a nice aye. extra. You know what I mean? Aye. It's good to see like this is what's possible for people to put the graft in. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And the Definitely. fact that like obviously you're both from Sunderland now, it just goes to show like. There is a bit of a hotbed in the northeast, anyway. For fighters. oh, definitely, there's a lot of mint talent from up there. The the thing I want to talk about was it was it testicular cancer, Rod? Yeah. When did you get the diagnosis? And again, the reason I say this, right? I want to know when you got the diagnosis. What, like, why you got the diagnosis? Yeah. Because again, if there's any lad out there, I think it's really important. And I'm never going to beat around the bush. I just like to talk about this stuff no, because no. again, it could save a life. Ah, oh, definitely. Ultimately, mate. So, what was your experience, and how did that come about? Um, so it's, it started, um, I'm trying to think, 
I would say one of the symptoms started like last year mm-hmm. in November. Um, well, no, about I probably last year in November, I started to get like a really bad back, but it was like it wasn't like a normal bad back, because mm-hmm. like, and that and that's why it probably took a little while to like get checked, because in a way you're like, wow, oh, well, I'm gonna have a bad back. I'm wrestling. I'm grappling. I'm mm-hmm. I'm bending the half. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm always I'm lifting weights. I'm always straining me back. Like every fight has got a bad back at some point. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, ah, it's just a bad back, but it just felt like. It just felt like my spine was like really old. Like it felt mm-hmm. like I was just like, my spine was just going to snap. And then, so I was just like putting it off and then I was like rehabbing me back because mm-hmm. I was, I thought I had like a bulging disc or something. Like that, so I was like rehabbing me back and now, now it was making it better. Um, and then the beginning of this year, I started to get like a tingling sensation in me, in me like sack. Mm. Uh, and then I just like, Still left that because I searched stuff on the internet and it was like, it, it was coming back like STDs and stuff like that. So I was like, F-. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, I haven't got an STD. <laughs> and then, um, so I was like, just thinking like, what what the fuck's wrong? Let me back's killing. And then like that started to get more, like the symptoms started to get like worse and worse. And then obviously I was like feeling down there and then I, f- I found like a little tiny lump. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem like, you know, like you, you will have felt yourself. Oh, like, yeah, everyone yeah. like checks the ball, do you know what I mean? And uh-huh. it's like sometimes you think, ah, is that just like part of my ball, or is that uh-huh. is that a lump, or is not? And then I went to the the hospital, and they said it was just a cyst. Mm-hmm. Um, the doctor was saying he was like, he was saying, oh, wh- where do you feel like the, the the lump is? And I was like, it feels like it's like imagine like just right in the middle of my ball. Like if I squeezed it, it was like in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, nah, I think it'll just be a cyst. And then, like, sent us off antibiotics. Even though you told him about the bad back and that, no? I told him all the symptoms and stuff like that. Um, and he sent us off. And then it was just playing on my mind. I was like, nah, this doesn't this doesn't feel right. Because I took the antibiotics and never went away. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, like, something's wrong here. And then I end up I end up ringing 111 and just lying. I just mm-hmm. lied to them. Because I, I read on the net, if you're passing blood, they'll, send you, like, they'll get you in quick mm-hmm. and send you for, like, ultrasound. So I just rang up and said, oh, excuse me, I've been over, I tell them, like, what I've been over for. I said, I've just been to the toilet and I've passed blood. But I never, I was lying. They got us in for ultrasound and then literally, like, a week later, they rang us up and they were like, oh, we're, like, 80% sure. Because they kind of give you a proper diagnosis of the ultrasound, mm-hmm. but, like, they can give you, like, 80%. They can see the cyst and that type ah, of thing. Ah, they can eye. see if it's a cyst or if it's something else. Mm-hmm. Um, And then they rang us up, like, two weeks later saying, oh, were like eighty percent sure you've got testicle cancer, mm-hmm. so I was like, "Fucking hell!" Like, how did you feel instantly? Was it like, did you think you were gonna die, or were you like, "Are you positive?" Like, you know what I mean? I did not. I, I don't know. In, in a way, I just sort of just like accepted it. I was just like, "Nah, do you know what?" I was just like, in my head, I was just like, "I've always thought of being a, being a bit of a tough guy, like tough mentally." So I was like, "I've got to just, I've just got to keep just being tough." Like, and my girlfriend was about to give birth in like. A month. Fucking so it was like she she was like crying and stuff and upset and obviously so so like I felt like I just had Was it all gone through your head like I'm never gonna see me burn and that and uh, or not did you li- not no, think about that? A little the so after the look was sound, so it was like a kind of long stint of where like you're sort of like unsure, you just sort of just floating, you didn't know what's going on really. And were you still getting the symptoms and all that? Aye, so uh, I was still getting the symptoms and they tell us that and they said, Oh, um, we eighty percent sure you're gonna we're gonna have to come in. We're gonna have to remove the testicle mm-hmm. and then send it off. Uh, they like check if it's hundred percent, and then obviously they came back and said, "Oh, that took another two weeks." And then they came back and they said, "Oh, it is. You've got stage one testicle cancer." Um, well, they never said stage one then because they said, "Oh, we need to do a CT scan and bloods to see if it's spread." And then when they said that, I was like, "Fuck, I forgot about that." I was like, oh, yeah. "I didn't. I didn't even think about it spreading." You just don't have it, chopped it off. That's ah, it. Yeah, I just right. thought, oh, it's, it's coming off and then I'll be sound. And then when they said that, that that was like the point where I was like, fucking hell, if it spread, like, if it spread to my belly, like, it could be bad. But then I was just like, everyone everyone around us was sort of like down, you know what I mean? So I just didn't want to just be like adding to that, especially with my girlfriend being pregnant and like mm. she's hormonal and obviously it's hard, like, it's hard for like a girl, like, like going through the pregnancy, you know what I mean? Like the, mm-hmm. the hormonal, the tired. Um, so I was just sort of just trying to just just be my normal self around it and stuff like that and just 
sure like I'm, I'm alright you mm-hmm. know what I mean I'm alright so when did they just say that you were fine everywhere else type of thing did you get that ah, and then the the CT scan the results of that took the longest to come back mm-hmm. so that took like three weeks to come back so for a good three weeks I was thinking like I could be a gone here and then they rang us up and I knew it was them because like you can sort of see on the call where they're ringing from and then the t- they said, like, oh, we'll, we'll just tell you about your results. And I was like, your heart sort of drops for a second because you think, like, oh, fuck, is it bad or good? They didn't see if it's good or bad. And they said, oh, you're all clear. It doesn't, there's no spread and stuff like that. So you're, you're all good now. So, fucking hell. So it just goes to show, mate, that you, you've took the, you know, you've caught it early getting them signs. You know, because there's a lot of people who, who die mm. with this. You know what Aye. I mean? Like, and it, as a young lad, it's like 27 year old, mate, you've got a burn on the way. It's, it's literally the horror story, that. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, but uh, in another way though, there's like, I feel like I got better at being like, like grateful mm-hmm. for stuff. Cause, and then I was just like thinking, like trying to think of stuff like, you know, like keep me mentality like strong. And I was like thinking like, well, at least I've got a kid. Mm. Cause it could have happened before and then I might never have, have a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That would be a lot worse. And then I was thinking like, there's babies born and they've got cancer. Like at least I've lived like 26 years of my life, and I'm I'm like, I've been around the world. I've experienced all sorts. You know what I mean? I've been been all different countries. I've been America, Thailand, stuff like that. So, so do you think do you, do you think you kind of made a bit peace with it? Then like, like I I'm I, gone, I could die definitely. here. Like do you know? I know again. This is a I'm just asking pure curiosity. You know when they chopped it off? Mm-hmm. Did you still have the pain, or did you realise it had gone? Cause no, you 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 do you get like phantom. Uh, because I read up on the internet after, because I was still getting like s- similar symptoms. Um, but they, they did see it, because I, w- I was meant to fight, I was meant to be like coming back to fight a, a little bit earlier than this. Mm-hmm. But I had like a little bit nerve damage off where they'd went into me sack and like cut it out. Mm-hmm. And they said that's just like common, like you, you, you get nerve damage from it. But it'll, it will get better as time goes on. So what I mean is when, when they cut it off, like removed yeah. it, like do we still get like back pain and all that and other symptoms? A little bit off the, the nerve damage, I had like back pain for a little bit right, while after. It actually got like worse after the chop it off. It got, my back got worse. Um, but then you get like symptoms of like, because I was getting like the odd shooting pain in, in my groin mm-hmm. and I still get that like now, like the odd shooting pain and stuff like that, but it's just, they said it's just part and parcel of like the operation and stuff like that mm-hmm. and you can get like phantom s- symptoms of like no if you get an arm chopped off it, it still feels like your arms are it still, <laughs> still feels like it. I've got two balls you know what I mean it's still just, got an itchy knack run aye, aye, aye. it aye. still feels the same you know what I mean so. I think and again I, and that's why it's important to even have a laugh about it like because I think that there's a lot of people who are going to miss them things right and people like you who are doing things you're putting yourself out there you're getting a bit of influence you're doing well in your life and then boom that hits you out of nowhere mm. and it's like look if just can talk about it lads if you've just fucking check your balls aye, just, aye just, definitely. I, know, I know it sounds that's why I, and no one likes to talk about it I, I talk to everyone about it like if they ask us I'm just like I'll just, I'll just tell them the crap me I'll just tell them like all my symptoms but <laughs> the funny thing is though every time I see a bad back everyone's like fuck I've got a bad back as well no, everyone's everyone's e- got a bad even back. Even when when you said it, I noticed they moved up like that in his chair. <laughs> I noticed. Everyone and I was does. thinking, well, I'm sure I've had tingling sensations before. Like, you know, been already. I like even that when I've said that, people have been like, I've had that before. Uh, but it's it's. I think it's when you start getting a few si- a few symptoms. Was 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 together. Was the pain unbearable? Like, was that you know when you no. ran one one one. Were you like, I kind of tap this knee, or were you just curious? What no, it is? I was just curious. Was like, it? The pain wasn't like unbearable and all that. Like, I, obviously, my back was like really bad. Like, every morning I'd, I'd get up and just stand in the shower, like, with the, the shower like boiling hot on my lower back, and that would like ease the pain every morning. But like, I'd get up out of bed and I felt like I was like 70. I felt like I was like old man, like, my back was just broken. That's so it was, mad, wasn't was really like the testicle, it was just uh, more just the back pain. But that's one of like the symptoms for like all types of cancer mm-hmm. but it's even worse on the testicle because it's like the same nerves join onto your coccyx bone and into your back and stuff like that and in your groin so it's like worse pain there but I've got I've got to ask you and again I, I want to move off the topic because it's putting a downer on it and you know what I mean no, no, I, just thought, I didn't want to I'm alright you know do, I mean? do you ever worry about it coming back um, or is that is is that because I, I again I didn't know much about cancer and testicular mm-hmm. cancer and that but 
is it something where like not dealt with now because that's gone or is it a case of it can like do you know what I mean like yeah. the fact that it's been there once could have come somewhere else now well the they give you they give you like leaflets and stuff like that when you get diagnosed and like send you out like stuff to read which is like it's stupid because it's just like it doesn't you read it it makes it worse because uh, then like what, I opened the page of like testicle cancer and it was like one in if you get it in one testicle one in three men get it in the other testicle and I was like fuck what they send this for <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, just didn't tell us. If I get it again, right. I'll just deal with it then. You know what I mean? But um, no, nah, I, I never really think about it. You know what I mean? I just, I just think nah, I'm just, just trying to be grateful every day and just think, nah, do you know what? Like, just do what you love and just enjoy every day. Wow, that's unbelievable, that mate. What's it like being a dad? Ah, uh, it's class. It's class. Well, how old's your little one? Um, seven month Sunday. So you're not, you're not sleeping very well. Nah, to be fair, me, me girlfriend's doing everything. Is so you? like, right. I can't, I can't complain. Like are, you, are, you a hand, are you a hands-on dad? Um, like, are you very like doing the nappies, doing all that stuff? Or I was a bit more in the beginning, but once I've been in camp, like my girlfriend sort of just took over and just done like she was already doing like most of the stuff anyways. Now she's just doing like literally all the stuff and just letting us just train. And if I needed like a nap during the day, like I can just get a nap and stuff like that. Like obviously, I just try and I just try and like make sure she's alright. Mm-hmm. Cause like. If she's not alright, how can she look after a baby? You know what I mean? Oh, like me- mental, not just like physically, mental, like mentally, like just I just try and like check in on her and just like make sure she's like happy and stuff like that. Cause I, I suppose like the baby can feel that. Yeah, I get you know what I mean, if the mom's like can pick up on anxiety and everything. Yeah, I picks up on anxiety and like like up to now, like the baby's just been like smiling every day and stuff like that. So it's it's been good. It's been it's an experience. Do you, do you want more kids? I definitely, definitely. The um, I mean, they said it's like a fifty-fifty chance now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Obviously, we've got one, so um, but I, I would like more. I would like, like three, four kids, maybe. My like, partner. Obviously, but, get the money first, and but as well, mate. The, the way you've got to look at it is like, you know, like you, you've you faced that shite in your life, but you've still been blessed with one. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Like, I, it, if I can it, then do you know what I mean. Like that's the way I always look. Cause I've got one. I want, like I want more kids, but like at the same time, I think you know if if it doesn't get me way, then we've still we've, we've got one little in there. Oh, and it's God. like you've just got to be grateful, and you know. I think obviously speaking to people like yourself make me reflect on my own life, which is mad, mate. Oh. Um, what's the kind of does does your lass like you fighting? Um, does you just see it as your job, your career, or does she not want you doing it? No, I think she just sees it as like my job and she sees that how much I love it and how much time I put into it. Um oh she 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 probably doesn't enjoy like man, she might enjoy it. Like she probably doesn't enjoy it when I lose, but she enjoys it when I win. But it's just the same feeling I get. Like I didn't yeah. enjoy it when I lose, but I enjoy it when I win. It's like just I I think I think she's supported us like from the beginning, you know what I mean? Since I've been amateur. Like before I was even like known as a fighter and stuff like that I just had a couple of fights like she was still supporting us like full on then and stuff like that and like even even like work me away from amateur to pro like she's helped us out so much like even like it, th- this is where like it sort of like hurts me ego like where she sort of like just paid for a lot of stuff for me mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's like mm-hmm. when you're going for meals and your girlfriend's paying it's like it's fucking that swings around about so mate I'm uh, sure like, you look after her oh no 100% I mean? like, like any, any time like I get money from fights and stuff like that. Like I, I treat her and stuff like that. Like, like everything I I I'm gonna get. Like it's hers as well. You know what I mean? But I mean, that's it, a relationship though. Mm. You've got to support each other when you know what I mean. Sometimes uh, it could be harder for you than her, and mm. and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? So you've got to just look at it that way around. You you know, like with your sort of building your profile, being on these shows, being on TV, doing these interviews, doing podcasts. Now I'm sure there'll be more people who want to do podcasts with you. Like. Do you do you like getting recognised? Because I I know a lot of people and they all know you. Aye. So I don't I, I don't know I don't I, I don't know. Oh, you not know, I just didn't really think. Maybe I don't think highly of myself because I, I don't know when people recognise and stuff like oh that's what picture I'm just like. I don't know. I'm just like. It might you feel weird. Ah, it's a bit weird. It's just like. I don't know. Mate, I would just say just absolutely lap it up, mate, because you're here uh, once, you know what I mean? You never mm-hmm. know. You've you just got to be here once and you've got to, at the end of the day, people look at, what, at your story, the things you're doing, and everyone's inspired. So many people who watch you, they're, they're inspired of what you do. Yeah. And not everyone will tell you, but they are. 
Like, because yeah. that, that's the way you look at it. Every time I see someone like yourself, he, whether it's your fight, whether it's another lad, he, it's always going to happen for me if, if they're local. Yeah. Because it's like, I will grow up in the same areas, we're not the same people, we're not the yeah. same crap. And it's like, get on, I just want you to fucking smash it. So it's like, when I see someone like yourself, jumping obviously Cage Warriors, 23rd of November, that's going to be that's gonna be mega. Um, what's your plans yeah. for the future? Like, fight, fighting-wise? Everything. Um, it's obviously a long-term goal. Like, the goal from the beginning is just get to the UFC um, and just just work my way to the top in the UFC. Obviously, it's like it's it's like one goal getting there, and then it's another goal staying there, and then it's another goal getting to the top. Like so, there's a lot of stages. Like it's mm. not just it's not just one little stage. You know what I mean? Do you have Obviously, a timeline you just want to get there. Ah, I know, I know what you mean. You just, that is the goal, and just fucking uh, get there first. No, but like some fighters, that's all they want. They just want to just get there. You know what I mean? I don't want to get. I just want to just be a UFC fighter. Like I want to be one of the best in the UFC. Like not just not just another fighter and. Just there, just to make money and stuff like that. Like, I want to be one of the the best fighters. It's unbelievable. Like, do you do you want to stay in Sunderland? Um, yeah. I, I, like, even if you hit the big time UFC, you're there. It's hard. It's hard to tell. To be fair, but I do like Sunderland. Like, I do like living in Sunderland. Like, when I lived in Liverpool and then I came back, I was like, I realised like, oh, no, I actually love Sunderland. Like, I love living here. So oh, like, that's the, nice. That, the like. people's good and stuff like that. Um, is everyone just like? Everyone thinks like, oh, Sunderland, shit, like I want to get out of here and I want to move away and get out of like Sunderland, but it's like, other places are not that good. Like, I've been to other places, like they're not even, just the same. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? I like know. I lived in, I, when I lived in Liverpool, I lived next to Goodison Park. Mm-hmm. Absolute shit all. Mm-hmm. Like, like walk out, I was walking outside my flat one day and there was like, a crackhead just lying on the floor, I don't know if he's dead or not. Right outside my uh. flat. And See, it's just it's like not, people think moving away is always gonna be the better option. I I mean, there's place in Liverpool that's like really nice, like uh, for uh, form being stuff like that. Like there's really nice place in Liverpool, but it's the same as Sunderland. There's nice places, there's bad places, but it's just obviously you don't want to live in the bad places. <laughs> you'd rather live in the good place. But um, I, I I think I'd always just stay in Sunderland. Do you know what I mean? Like I would, maybe I would move away for a year, mm-hmm. two year, a couple of years, like I've done before. But like I, I think I would always come back to Sunderland. Who would be your ideal opponent? Do you want that rematch? For like debut, Aye. debut fight, um, definitely Reese McKee. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I like, I like Reese. Like we're, we're like we're still talk now. You know what I mean? We we respect each other and stuff like. That. Like you kind of knock on through a wall like that. And respect each other. Yeah, yeah. No matter who wins and loses, like you're always gonna respect each other. But um, I definitely want that want that rematch back. Because especially one of the reasons what, what pissed us off as well, like when I was fighting in Belfast, like the fans were trying to fight us on the way out. Mm-hmm. And I, I got knocked out and they're still trying to fight us on the way back to the they're changing room. Trying to room. fight you? Ah, like trying to jump out of the barriers, trying to fight us. And, oh, and, and then they're like, and then they were like starting on my family and stuff like that. Like my girlfriend got abuse while she was there. I was like blo- full grown blokes giving my girlfriend abuse and stuff like that. So I'm just like, fuck, fuck them. Fuck fuck them yes. Get that fight yeah, back. It's embarrassing. No, nah, it is. You know, I, who's I, doing that to, to birds? Do you know I, what I mean? like, what kind it's of it's shite. It's horrendous, that mate. But um, now, nah, mate, I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover, mate. Because I think it's been. I want to see where your career goes because I think it's only going from strength to strength. I think yeah. you want to start with a good Cage Warriors. It's going to be yeah. mint. How many fights have you got, with Cage Warriors? How many fights have you left? got with Cage Warriors? Have you got another? This is my last fight in the contract. So potentially after this fight, that's where you want to go. In the UFC. I or maybe just. Like sort of trying, kind of route where I'm not like tied in. Like you don't want to get tied into a, a big show where they're not related to the UFC. Some shows not like that. So it's just it's just picking the right promotion after this fight and seeing where I want to go after that and like just staying on that route of not getting like tied off because obviously there's like PFL and stuff like they're offering big money. Mm. But um, like my goal is the UFC, so I don't want to just gone off that route without that I'm on, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna after this fight just look for the best options to still take us to that route. When you look at someone like Engano, what do you yeah. think of that? What do you think of the whole boxing crossover lads gone? Is it something you'd consider? Because I know you, you you fought in K one and also you've had loads of striking coming you've done loads, haven't you as well? I was four, fourteen and oh K one. Um Bloody hell, man. so and I had one one boxing fight. I won that. Um 
But I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's like, I feel like that's like sort of end of your career stuff. Mm. When you've done what you want to do and then you're just still there, then it's like, then it's time to chase the money. You know what I mean? But what happens if it was offered now? Like, let's say you get my 10 times the money now. Mm. Gun into boxing, would you do it? Or have you still got that, I want to be in the UFC? Um, it depends. If it, if it didn't like interfere with still getting to the UFC, mm-hmm. look like Kiefer Crosby. Mm-hmm. This, well, I mean, that was, I, d- I don't know how that worked. Like, probably because he's McGregor's training partner. Oh. But like, he fought Aaron Chalmers and then he got sent to the UFC. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you know. Like, that's shite. I know. It's that, that's another guy I'd actually like to fight, Kiefer Crosby. Would you? Aye. Because I remember when I was amateur, I was fighting on Ice FC and Am Fopper was doing the matchmaking. Mm-hmm. And I got offered, no, I got offered two different opponents and they were both from SBG Ireland. Mm-hmm. I didn't know any of them. And then I sort of just, like, before I took took the fight, he messaged Am no, I took the fight. My coach just accepted the force. Like, I've never... I never ex- sort of accept the fight to me. Coach will just sort of do that for you. Just takes mm-hmm. the stress off stuff. and um, Accepted the fight with the other guy. And then he was seeing stuff like, oh, he doesn't want to fight us. Tell him it's not the UFC. Uh, his record doesn't mean that much and stuff like that. Then a few years later, I was on Bellator. No, I was on Bama. And I got off- offered him for Ireland. And he turned me down. See? So I was like, I, I don't know. I just I, I didn't really like him. I just want to. I just if want it to happens, it happens, mate. Aye. It does. Not you get the day what you need to do. Aye. But Justin Burlington, thank you so much for coming on, bro. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you, I mate. I appreciate that. Boom. So you've made it to the end of the episode. Fair play. If you want to watch more episodes like this, click here.